Hello friends, uh, welcome to Learners Planet. Friends, this is our first session for area of parallelograms and triangles. In this session, we are going to discuss about the various formulae and concepts related to areas of uh, parallelograms and triangles. We will be discussing uh, various parallelograms over here. Uh, we will be discussing rectangles, we will be discussing rhombus, we will be discussing squares, and uh, apart from that, uh, these parallelograms, we will be discussing trapeziums also. And in the case of triangles, we will be taking the cases of equilateral triangle, right angle triangle, isosceles triangles, and all that. Okay, so let's begin the journey of areas. Friends, uh, in our session of polygons, we have discussed about various shapes and sizes. Okay. We discussed about parallelogram, we discussed about trapezium, we discussed about rectangles, equilateral triangles, and right angle triangles. Okay. In this session, we are to calculate their areas. Okay. Now, first of all, let's define what an area is. We see all these uh, figures over here. All of these are plane regions. Okay. So, this is the part, this this inner part is enclosed by a closed boundary. We can see this is a closed boundary and the inner portion is enclosed in this closed boundary. Okay, so this closed boundary we call it as a plane region. And the magnitude of the measure of this planar region is called the area. That is, this portion is the area of a parallelogram. Similarly, this portion is area of rectangle, it's trapezium, this equilateral triangle, and this is right angle triangle. Okay, so the portion which is enclosed in closed boundary is area. Okay, now area is always calculated in some unit, and generally the units are centimeters, meters, inches. Okay or maybe kilometers. But how do we represent these units? The areas are represented in square units that we have to be very careful. Square units. We use meter, kilometer, inches, but these are linear units. If we have to represent the areas, then we have to write meter square, kilometer square, inch, inches square, or maybe square feet okay so areas are represented in square units first of all let's write down the formula for each and every shape that we have discussed uh, this is a rectangle in this rectangle this is length and this is breadth of, uh, of the rectangle so this is length and this is breadth so area of a rectangle is length into breadth. Okay. Now this is a square. This is also one sort of rectangle. But it's have, it, it will have all the sides as same. So this is length, this is breadth, but breadth in this case will be equal to length. Okay, so it's area of square will be equal to length into length, that is length square, or we can say side square. Okay, now we have triangles. The area of triangle is half of base into height. This half of base into height. Now this is base and this is height. Since it is a right angle triangle, it's a right angle triangle, so the area of triangle will be half of base into height, okay? Suppose the triangle is not a right angle triangle, then suppose this is the height of the triangle, it's 90 degree. So this will be known as base and this is height. Okay, 
So it's half of base into height. This is right angle triangle and this is an isosceles or equilateral triangle. Okay, but we must be knowing the height of the triangle and the length of the base of the triangle. Okay, apart from that, uh, one more formula is there for uh, calculation of area of triangle. It's square root of S, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. Suppose we don't know the length of uh, height or base. So what we can do is, if we know the sides of the triangles, then also we can calculate the area. Suppose the sides of the triangle is A, B, and C. So S over here is the semi-perimeter, that is A plus B plus C by 2. We call it as semi-perimeter. Just write. It's semi perimeter. Okay, so the formula for area of triangle is S, S minus A, S minus B, and S minus C, and the square root. Okay. Uh, friends, now we have discussed the area of a triangle. What if all the three sides of the triangle are equal? But that means if it is an equilateral triangle. If it is an equilateral triangle, A will be equal to B will be equal to C. Right? So what will be the formula in that case of area of triangle? Let's calculate it. Suppose this is a triangle. And all the three sides of this particular triangle are equal. Maybe this is A, this is also A, and this is also A. Now, if we put the values of sides over here in this particular formula, what we will be getting is, we'll be getting the area of this equilateral triangle. So first of all, let's calculate the semi perimeter over here. S is equal to A plus A plus A by 2, or we can say it is 3A by 2 for an equilateral triangle. Okay, now just put the value of S uh, and uh, ABC over here in this particular area formula. So, area of equilateral triangle is it's 3A by 2. 3A by 2 minus A will be A by 2. Further, B will be equal to A since it is an equilateral triangle. So further, 3A by 2 minus A by 2 is A by 2. And here it is also A by 2. Okay. So, it's A raised to 4. So after coming out from the square root, it will be A square. Then it is 2 raised to 4. So if it comes out from the square root, it will be 2 square. That is 4. And we get root 3. So what is the formula of an equilateral triangle's area? That is root 3 A square by 4, where A is the side of this equilateral triangle. I hope you are clear. Now let's discuss the area of a parallelogram. Here we see parallelogram. The area of the parallelogram is base into height. This is base of the parallelogram and this is height of the parallelogram. So, area of parallelogram will be base into height. Okay, if I say this is P and this is H, so it will be P into H. You can directly use the formula whenever required. Okay. Let's now calculate the area of a rhombus. We see a rhombus over here. These are the diagonals of the rhombus. I say them D1 and D2. Okay, this is the intersecting point of them. Okay, now what will be the area of rhombus? It's 
it's half of d1 into d2 that is half of product of diagonals okay friends do you know know the logic behind that this uh, half d1 into d2 you see a triangle over here these are the four triangles of which this rhombus is made up of okay and these are actually right angle triangles so what is the area of right angle triangle it is half base into altitude okay half base here base will be half of the diagonal okay this is a complete diagonal d1 so this will be half of d1 i just write it over here half of d1 so half base into altitude altitude will be half of d2 because the complete diagonal length is d2 so this will be half of d2 so this is the area of one triangle one right angle triangle and we are having four right angle triangle over here so i just multiply it to four so it's half d1 into d2 that will be the area of rhombus clear yeah? let's now see the area of a trapezium we see a trapezium over here a trapezium is a shape having one set of parallel lines here this and this both the lines are parallel to each other suppose i name them as a and b and this is a perpendicular suppose i take it as height h okay so what will be the area of the trapezium it is half of sum of parallel sides into distance between them now what i mean uh, with the this distance between them is the perpendicular distance between them here it is h so it's half sum of parallel sides means a plus b into distance between them is h over here so this is area of trapezium clear so we have discussed the basic formula of uh, various shapes now let's start doing some problems and theorems first of all let's discuss this simple property a diagonal of a parallelogram divides it into two triangles of equal area that we have to uh, establish okay suppose this is a parallelogram ab c and d and this is the diagonal ac okay now we have to prove that these are the two triangles which are of equal area that means to prove triangle abc area of triangle abc is equal to area of triangle adc okay now friends it's very simple to prove this okay i just compare these two triangles triangles abc and triangles adc so if i prove them to be congruent then when we can easily say that the areas of the two congruent triangles will be same isn't it now since ab is parallel to dc okay that means this angle and this angle will be same angle cab will be equal to angle dca why alternate angles isn't it these are alternate angles okay similarly line ad is parallel to line bc ad is parallel to bc that means this angle will be equal to this angle okay that means angle dac will be equal to angle acp okay and the third thing is line ac is common between these two triangles so 
AC is equal to CA. So this is the first thing, this is the second thing, and this is the third thing. So it's angle side angle congruence. Okay. A S A congruence. So if two triangles are congruent to each other, definitely they can be superposed on one another. That means both of them are having same shape and size. That means both of them must be of equal area. Clear? Now let's discuss the uh, theorem. Parallelograms on the same base and between the same parallels are equal in area. Okay, here we are having two parallelograms. I just named them. It's A, B, C, D, and the other is A, B, E, and F. Okay, so we are having two parallelograms over here. And uh, definitely both of them are uh, having the same ba base, that is AB. And definitely both of them are uh, between the same parallels. Okay, that is FC and AB. Okay, so what's given to us? A, B, C, D and A, B, E, F are parallelograms. This is the first thing and the second thing is they have common base that is AB and they are between the same parallels. Okay, and the bases are AB and FC. Okay, now what we have to prove that parallelogram ABCD area, I mean, area of parallelogram ABCD is area of parallelogram A. B, E, F. That we have to prove. Okay. So let's begin to do it. Let's now discuss the proof. Okay. Now I take these two triangles. Triangle A, B, F and triangle B, E, C. Okay. I name some of the angles over here. This is maybe angle 1, this is angle 2, this is angle 3, and this is angle 4. Okay. Now, the very first thing is AF is parallel to BE and AF is equal to BE since ABEF is a parallelogram. So, AF is equal to BE, that is the first thing. Second thing, BC is equal to AD since ABCD is also a parallelogram. So BC is equal to AD. This is the second thing. Then we have to, uh, I, I'll prove over here that angle 4 is equal to angle 1. How do we do that? See, this is a parallelogram AB, EF, AB, EF, parallelogram. So, angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 will be 180 degree. Why? Because the sum of interior angles uh, between two parallel lines is 180 degree. So, BE is parallel to AF. That means the sum of these two angles will be 180 degree. And this angle is combination of angle 1 and angle 2. So, angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 is 180 degree. Similarly, if we see this parallelogram ADPC, so angle 2 plus angle 3 plus angle 4 will be 180 degrees since line AD is parallel to BC. And for the same reason, that is sum of interior angles is 180 degree. I can write angle 2 plus angle 3 plus angle 4 is 180 degree. 
okay suppose i subtract this equation from this equation what i'll be getting is angle 1 minus angle 2 is 0 that means angle 1 is equal to i'm sorry angle 2 angle 2 angle 3 angle 3 it's angle 4 so angle 1 minus angle 4 is 0 that means angle 1 is equal to angle 4 so what i can say is fad that is angle f a b is equal to angle e b c and that is the third thing that means these two triangles are congruent to each other okay so what i can say f a d that is triangle a d f and triangle b e c are congruent to each other so if the two triangles are congruent to each other definitely they will be having the same area that we have proved earlier in the previous theorem so both the triangles are having same area so these two triangles are having same area now what now I compare uh, between the two parallelograms parallelogram a b e f I'm sorry this is p a b e f and parallelogram a b c d okay now parallelogram a b e f is made up of these two portions right that is triangle a d f triangle a d f plus quadrilateral a b e d Okay, so this is the parallelogram A, B, E, F. Here, I'm talking about area. Area of triangle ADF plus area of quadrilateral A, B, E, D will be equal to area of parallelogram A, B, E, F, right? Similarly, if I talk about parallelogram A, B, C, D, Here, area of triangle EBC plus area of quadrilateral ABED will be equal to area of parallelogram ABCD. Okay, now just see these two equations. We have proved that uh, area of triangle ADF is equal to area of triangle EBC. Okay. And this portion that is ABED is common between the two parallelograms. Okay. That means ultimately we are getting the same sum of area for both the parallelograms. Okay. So we can say that area of parallelogram ABCD and area, area of parallelogram ABEF will be same. That means parallelograms on the same base and between the same parallels are equal in area okay it's very very important theorem okay now let's uh, do this uh, theorem prove that area of parallelogram having b as base and h as height is base into height okay suppose i have a parallelogram a b c and d a b is base that means i can say it is b and the height of this parallelogram is suppose uh, which is given to us as h okay so we have to prove that area of this parallelogram that is a b c d is base into height now friends it's quite simple it's a b c d b c uh, that uh, uh, parallelogram is here then we draw a rectangle that means this perpendicular i'm drawing over here this and similarly this and we have just proved that the area 
of two parallelograms on the same base and between the same parallels are equal in area. Okay. And here we see two parallelograms. Um, rectangle is also a parallelogram that you must be knowing. So I, here I see two parallelograms that is A, B, C, D and parallelogram A, B, B, Q. Now both of them are between same uh, base and uh, the on the same base and between the same parallels. So definitely area of parallelogram ABCD should be equal to area of parallelogram ABPQ. But ABPQ is actually a rectangle since we have drawn perpendicular on uh, this side CD. Okay, so area of rectangle is what? It's length into breadth. Now what breadth over here, it's B, and what length is, it's H. So it's base into H. This base into H is, uh, area will be same for parallelogram ABCD, okay? So it is the same for area of parallelogram ABCD. Quite simple. Our friends, we will be solving more uh, problems and uh, we will be discussing more theorems in our next session. Do revise this session uh, as we have discussed the basic terminologies and basic formulae in this session. Okay, bye-bye.